Hello and welcome to Music Music. My name is Craig Seibert and today I will be joined by my brother George Seibert. We love to talk about music. We're passionate about it and it's a big part of our lives. Every once in a while we have these conversations and we thought we'd just like to share those with you. So if you love music, sit back and enjoy this podcast. Okay, welcome back for episode six. Got my brother on the line. Yep, how you doing? Uh, got the snow on the ground outside in my area. And, uh, well, it's raining here. Does that count? Uh, kind of, I guess. Um, today we are going to kind of talk about something that's been going on in the the news and stuff lately anyways. We lost a couple members. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. We lost a couple members to Music Society. Um, but we're going to kind of touch on that a little bit today in a, in a different way. We're going to uh, talk about bands that have lost uh, integral parts of their band and what's happened to them after. Uh, did they go on with another part of that band? Did they not go on? Do we feel that they shouldn't have went on if they did go on? Uh, I, go ahead. I, I didn't want to interrupt, but I wanted to, <laughs> to specialize because we, we actually, I actually had to clarify. This is band that lost members like that can't get them back. Right by death, not not necessarily, you know. Hey, we kicked you out of the band because you suck or can't right. you know, keep your drugs down and stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it's, that, it's that, death. I wanted to clarify that because it it it, it was confusing to me and uh, for listeners. I wanted to just to make sure that uh, that they know that this is uh, they lost members of integral members of the band, either singers or guitar players or drummers or whatever, to death, and what they did in the in the process and in the some of them are just weeks and some of them are years and decades afterwards. So. Right. And, and I will, I'll kind of start it off with one that I did a little slight bit of research because there was a bunch of them that really hit me right off the top of my head. But sure, I'll give you one that was the, the first one I looked up was something odd. Um, and, and I should have known this. I probably should have known this. But so Brian Jones named the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Had no idea. I mean, I yep. knew that there was early members, kind of like the early, the, the quote-unquote fifth Beatle, you know. Right. I didn't realize that Brian Jones actually named the Rolling Stones. Right. Um, yeah, so uh, that was a shocker to me that, you know, obviously they went on and, and haven't, you know, had any major losses and deaths yet. A couple small ones, but I didn't realize that he actually was, <laughs> the, made the moniker the Rolling Stones, so... Right. And when I started this process, I did kind of the same thing because, I mean, the you and I, and I, I can only assume people listening, you think of the obvious Nirvanas and so on and so forth. Um, but I, I did, I went back to and and one of the, but the be, only because one of my earliest memories of that was the Beach Boys. Right. Um, I think it was Brian Wilson. No, Dennis, well, Dennis Wilson. Dennis, Dennis yeah. Wilson. Yeah, I'm sorry. I always get him confused. I mean, one of the founding members, one of the boys, you know. Yeah, Brown, no, it was. Brown or yeah. whatever. And, and, and then um, the second one that I don't know, I don't know why, but it always stuck out to me was uh, the Mamas and the Papas, Mama Cass. Oh, uh, right. Dying. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. And to, we'll, we'll kind of springboard off that because. You know, you can't. It's just such a distinct sound, right? That that comes out of that. That that when you lose something like that, it's so hard to come back from it. And see, the thing that this was, I, and I told you, this was really intriguing to me because if you lose a singer and you replace a singer, and I know we'll get into ACDC, I know because <laughs> yes. I know how you are about. I if you lose a singer. I think that's incredibly more difficult to overcome than losing one of the other band members because, you know, and and for you and I, I mean, ACDC and 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 later to that effect, Boston, are two of our like bread and butter bands, yeah. lost their sound. They're they're truly you know they're what you know recognizable part of their sound. Yes, of course, you know, recently losing Malcolm Young is, yeah, that that's, that's an anomaly where you, 
he was this, you know, I, I hate to use the word again. He was the sound of that band. Yeah. But I mean, when you lose a vocalist, it's inc- I think it's, I think it's almost infinitely more difficult to overcome than losing one of the support band members. And I well, don't know what you're. It, no, it is. And, and, you know, we'll talk about some dynamics of some other bands that it, you know, it, it kind of wasn't that, but you know, when you listen to music, and that's that's one thing that that I always talked about with the the local band I was in is, you know, we had a a a, a singer that I was very good friends with, and right. he had a very distinct voice. Sure. And and as much as I loved writing music and making the the guitar sounds and making you know that fit the song itself, he was still the front man. That's why they call him the front man. He's out mm-hmm. front. Yep. He is a unique sound. And to lose that loses a a big part of it. Now, one could make the argument with ACDC that Angus, you know, kind right. of leads the show a little bit. <laughs> so losing him first may have really actually crippled the band almost more than Bon Scott. I mean, early maybe not, but... You know, later on, if they had if Bon Scott had stuck around, you know, in the mid '80s or oh, something, because yeah. he died, he died in what '80? '81. I think, I, yeah, I thought '81. Yeah, '80 or '81. Right there, early. Yeah, yeah, because uh, Highway to Hell came out in '79, so and he right. died right after that came out. So, um, you know, I think maybe losing Malcolm at that point, or I'm sorry, uh, Angus at that point, or Malcolm. I I, well, I would true. argue either true. one. But I think as far as, far as show, as far as going sure. out, oh, yeah, show, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. we've talked about that before that, yeah. you know, the bands, <laughs> that'll be a later episode, but we've talked about bands that kind of rely on the show the as their, yeah. their, yeah, their gimmick. Yeah. And it, it might have actually crippled them more to lose him than Bon Scott at the time. Yeah. But when, at the time they did lose him, they moved into Brian Johnson and. Right. <sighs> And there, there are exceptions to these rules. I mean, they're not. I even mean, wouldn't say rules. There are exceptions to these, to these opinions. Because I, I usually try to preface all this as our <laughs> opinion, my opinion, right. your opinion. But do you argue? You can argue that. And but I, the um, two bands that lost integral part, like The Who and Led Zeppelin, both right. lost drummers. Yep. In the meat and potatoes of their careers. Well, but, Moon but was you, 78, and Bonham was probably right there too, right? 79? It was 80. 80? It was 80. Right. But, but, if you look, but if you look at those two, wow. Um, so not to put Keith Moon down. I'm, I'm not saying that Keith Moon wasn't an amazing drummer, but John Bonham had a, a distinct sound right. in his drumming. Um, so, you know, you know, we had talked about touching on the point of whether people should or should not have went on. Right. That's what and, I was. That's where I was. Yeah, I'll I'll dial back to ACDC real quick, and then we'll come back to the Who and Led Zeppelin. So, had had ACDC not went on, you know, you shook me all night long would not have existed. Maybe. I mean, who knows? Maybe maybe Bon Scott was actually working with you know them and writing that at that point, or maybe not. But right. Somewhere out there, I know there's some recordings of him doing that song, but um, <laughs> I digress. But uh, but I, I we wouldn't have gotten that. So, you know, I would say that in, in my feelings, ACDC went on and did exactly what they needed to do by replacing Bon Scott. As much as I hate to say it, you know, part of me says, ah, let it go. Just, you know, you guys did great stuff. Let it go. We wouldn't have had the, the entire back and black album, right? Or if, I, I mean, or <sighs> see here. Here's where it gets muddy for me. I love, I love ACDC. I'm I ninety ninety percent of their stuff. I mean, you get into the mid nineties, and I not because of Brian Johnson, but I felt like they should have hung it up a yeah, decade well, or so ago, just because yeah. of. Just because, um, at the same time, I think for those about to rock is, yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, it is. I put that up there against a lot of albums. Yeah, true. I think the album as a whole is a little bit um, subpar to Back in Black. Yes, but there, the, but the songs that are on there are the, that 
got radio play were really strong. So yeah, yeah. I, I I could see that. Yeah. I mean, for those about to ride the cannons, I mean that's that's yeah. almost that's almost a trademark for them. True. I mean, because but when I yeah. saw them in concert. I'm st- I think my ears are still ringing from the cannon, <laughs> and that was like '91. I think when I saw them. But but, but to circle that back around, I don't mean to interrupt, but let me no. circle it back around. So 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 for the who to lose Keith Moon. I think for them to semi continue on was kind of a mistake. I think that the Who had a lot to give to the Music Society, and probably, probably, I don't want to say wrongfully deprived us of it, but I think they they really deprived us of some talent that that we 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 should have got out of that. Well, see, I think by um, uh, Daltrey doing solo work and um uh Townsend doing solo work and his out of music antics aside um th- I think that was more of a of a necessity than continuing the who I mean the who made did they make now I am drawn a blank I'm in unknown territory I don't know if they made how many more albums they made after Moon died? But that's a good question. Um, but die seventy eight. I thought it was seventy. Yeah, it was seventy eight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the, but there again, the band itself didn't didn't continue on long, if at all. And I I I would wager a guess that maybe if they made another album without Moon, I would be impressed. But see, they're back touring as the Who again. And they've lost Entwistle too since then, the bass player. So I mean, right? Does that count when you lose multiple members that to keep continuing on as the band? Or my big anti this whole thing is like Guns N' Roses right now. I, I use air, I'm using air quotes. You can't see that. Uh, Axl Rose touring with a completely different band. Some guy in a top hat, you know playing Guns N' Roses music as Guns N' Roses, I think is an atrocity. So, but they're not making new music. So does that count? Is that something that, you know, by losing the band, but that gets into the nobody died. So I'm going to move. Right. I'm, I'm gonna move I, back I think, out yeah, I, I think that's, we kind of cleared that up, but I mean, maybe that's another episode. Maybe that's another, yeah. Hey, they left the band and didn't die right. kind of thing. But but I think you're right. I don't. I mean, I just read over real quick of of what the Who did, and they did release a couple albums afterwards, but n- none of them had any actually hits off of them. Okay, how about um, Led Zeppelin then? After yeah, so Led Zeppelin. Bottom. But again, you you know you talked about Moon going out or um, the guitar player um, Townsend. Yeah, Townsend going out, and he did a lot of solo stuff. A lot of session right. work with other musicians and a lot of solo work that right you know he kind of made a name for himself afterwards um I, I don't you know again that there was a couple albums they made after him. he actually um daltrey made a, a statement right after he died that you know they want to continue on they want to do this and stuff but it, it, it just didn't go where they wanted it to go right but <sighs> at led zeppelin you know they're like they were iconic before that they were a band that was no, they were huge. You know, that when when uh, Bonham died, that was like I said, right in the in the peak, late seventies. You know when that's when Led Zeppelin was Led Zeppelin. Mm-hmm. You know, well, and and you know, technically, what album was released? There was an album released right after, uh, right after uh, Moon died. Uh, it was actually Moon or Bonham. Recorded. Oh, um, Bonham. No, no, I was back on oh, on the, the Who. Ooh. There was they actually released an album right after okay. he died. He'd recorded, but the one of the bigger albums, or maybe it was a video. Um, okay, that go ahead. That, oh, that actually, I mean, we can digress off of the Who and and Led Zeppelin for a second. Yeah. Yep. That also, you and you touched on it briefly for a second. The law, quote unquote, lost recordings, right? You know, <laughs> to be because. One of my favorite bands, uh, Stone Temple Pilots, did that. Mm-hmm. A couple years, you know, after he died, they released songs. Um, there's, and it, 
you know, pardon me, it pisses me off that Tom Morello is saying that they've got like 20 yeah. songs that Audio Slave recorded with Chris Cornell, which Chris Cornell is my is my favorite vocalist of all time. I mean, I, I think I'm not even going to get into that, but I think holding on to this stuff and not giving, I mean, that falls into bands that should have went on or bands that did go on and made crappy music without their lead singer or changed lead singers or got another one or whatever. Um, and I'll say this stone temple pilots, new lead singer. It took them two years. Literally the anniversary of Scott's death was the fourth, I think December 4th, yeah. which mm -hmm. was, um, for those listening is like four or five days ago, uh, yeah. in context. And their new lead singer is, much like Alice in Chains did, it's it's very it's hauntingly similar, and I think the music they're going to make is going is still good because I think here's what I got when I was researching this: the singer and the band, the talent level between them, I think was was the key. What I mean is, if the if you have a great singer and a great band. I think the band can go on and still make good music, but if you, if point. if the singer is average and you've got you know like the 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 guitar player or the bass player or the or, or the drummer is the one writing and, and and making the music and and doing you know making the quality sound and you just got a guy that's not untalented but that's that's just filling in the space. I think you can fill that space, and I'm not taking yeah. anything away from Scott Weiland. I'm saying no. that if, but if the lead singer, i.e. Jimi Hendrix and the Jimi Hendrix ex experience, if he goes away, you know, singer, guitar player, songwriter, and then the rest of the band, I mean, do you even know any of the other, of the the experience? Yeah. Could you even name uh, somebody out of that band? No, so, but I, I, I will give you the perfect example of that, and that's The Doors. I was, and you beat me to it. I was just, that's where I was going. <laughs> Because we and you and I have talked at great length about that. What is the appeal? Well, I, I know I, my appeal of the Doors is definitely different. Than right, right, right. I am certainly a Doors fan, but I, I, I will one hundred percent tell you that you know, Menzerik was semi known after that and did a lot of riding on the Doors coattails. Right. You know, no offense to him, but there it, it was. It, well, that's you know, what I'm talking about. He was the band. Morrison was the band. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Much like. I'm sorry, but Chris Cornell, I mean, carried, a, I mean, most of the bands he was in. I mean, Soundgarden was a, a was a great group, but, right. I mean, once he, once he left, the band didn't make anything. When he, right. when he came back, they toured recently, um, right up to, I mean, he died on tour with Soundgarden. Right. And, 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 but, you know, that, that's a kind of a messy one because, He'd already left, right? But he didn't die, so it kind of falls into that other one. But right, but I mean, but yeah, I, but I mean, uh, as far as um, audio, uh, what I was getting to was like Audio Slave Morello having, you know, almost like holding a golden ticket. You know, hey, I've mm -hmm. got a, a way to make more money, uh, and I, your girlfriend Courtney Love. I know you. I, oh, I know. Don't, she, e I know, don't even get me started on her. Right, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Supposedly, there's still unreleased Cobain stuff, which I, Nirvana in and of itself, but see there again, he died and Dave Grohl did the Foo Fighters, which have been infinitely more. I, I, he didn't continue Nirvana. They didn't continue, you know, Nova Selleck and, and Grohl didn't continue Nirvana with a different singer. Grohl just started another project and made so... That's what I was saying about the talent level. I mean, right. if exactly if there's and if there's if the band has enough talent, I don't think it matters. So when you say well, continuing, that's where it got strange for me. Yeah. Well, I, I think it. I think continuing would be in the the strictest sense. Right. Like right. I, I'll 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 give you the big one, and and you haven't touched on it yet. I'm kind of shocked, but I'll give you the big one. Not the singer, but an extremely integral part to the band as a whole, as a musician, and as friends. Cliff Burton. 
died. Yes, right. Best best friends with everyone in the band. An amazing bass player. If you haven't oh, seen Anesthesia, probably the video, go, go watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um. Uh, but but that's but that's what you're kind of what you're talking about is they they didn't they were destroyed by that. I mean, just and especially no, what happened. I mean, if you go look it up, but you I'm just guys pausing. Can see, you know, see how it happened if you don't. But I'm actually pausing because I can't. I cannot believe that never. I never even. I, that never even came up for me. I, I, Are you pausing, uh, like, pausing the recording? or No, I mean, I'm pausing in disbelief yeah, I that I... Uh, I know. That I, because missed, it's, that it's, I missed that one? Well, <laughs> Swinging a miss? It, it fits in exactly oh, what you're no, saying. Oh, that, no, that, that's a game changer. Yeah, and, and you know, to put... Um, uh, Newstead? Jason Newstead in there yeah. and create Injustice for All... Is, but see, you know, that's the thing where they base. I mean, if, as of late, there was basically no bass track in "And Justice for All." Um, true. They 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 true. basically edited most of his bass. I mean, you've heard the arguments now. You know, Newstead complaining and them, you yeah. know, not not just kind of shrugging their shoulder. That's where I think that, and. I'm going to say this, that's, you know, we, t- we talked about a different subject about albums that you have to listen to all the way through. That album there is, I think, their best work. It's so dark, yeah. it's so heavy, and it shouldn't have been, I honestly think it shouldn't have been made, I'm so glad it was, but it shouldn't have been made that soon. They, they, yeah, I wasn't... I- they were. I wasn't saying still. that Newstead had something to do with it. I'm just saying that that album moved them forward. Yes. And, and as a band, as a band Metallica. And yes, you know, later on he became a very integral part as well. And you know, it's hard to say. It's hard to see that the you know the '90s without Metallica and Newstead standing there. But yeah, I just meant they moved forward without a, an extremely integral part of their band. Absolutely, and to me. I was, that's one that I was glad that they did move on. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying is, is, you know, I think that fits into that, but, but, but there's no replacing him personally in that band. Right. But do you, there, I mean, then you can get into the argument if Hetfield would have been on the top bunk or whatever, do you think that you think they would have made that album? Exactly. And that's, that's, you know, that's, this is what, that's exactly what we're talking about here. And, and, and then you go another route, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take a, a right turn here. I know you, you you know you're mad at yourself for missing the Cliff Burton, but we're we're gonna take a right turn. And you know what's your feeling on replacing the singer with someone that is extremely close? You know you talked about talent in the band, and if you know somebody like um, Hendrix goes away, the band kind of goes away. But I know you don't like the band; you're not a fan of the band. But Leonard Skinner, yeah. I mean, see, there obviously when when like when I started researching bands that lost members, Leonard Skinner was number one on everybody's list on every Google, yeah. on every Google search and everything. Was, oh, Leonard Skinner, Leonard Skinner, Leonard Skinner. I replaced him with his brother. I don't know if right. anybody else listens to these podcasts, but it's hard for me to determine you and I, even when I listen to sometimes. them. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. I mean, when we're speaking, it's pretty close. <laughs> Mannerisms, yeah. Yeah. tone. I mean, it's, it, it it's really close. And, um, yes, I'm not a fan, but I, and I said, um, Stone Temple Pilots did it. Alice in Chains did it. Um, well, who was the guy they got, um, in Queen that was from, um, American Idol TV show? Yeah. American Idol. Yeah. I can't tell you his name. I see there again, the talent level is is where i is where i think is is my break line because if slash izzy duff and steven adler toured with somebody besides axel rose as guns and roses it wouldn't work right, axel right. rose toured i i mean i know that's that's a different bird but i'm just saying the talent level like stone temple pilots tried it with chester bennington and they didn't make any new music, but they were touring with their old stuff with Chester Bennington. 
and and there again there's another one lincoln park are they going to yeah. continue to make music i right. mean because that was the last one on my list to talk about but yeah but well they're there again i mean i think it's talent level and chester it bennington is. i think was talented but i don't think he was a hundred percent of the band i mean mike shinoda no. and the there's a lot going on there and but I mean he was he was an integral part of the writing and I understand that and yeah, you know his voice is partially distinct but again they do have a lot of talent in there and you know I, we talked about Nirvana and you know I, if you listen to what uh, you know I I can't it's 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 the anomaly in what we're talking about I don't I don't think any of these bands or any of the bands you can look at on the list of the last fifty years of people that have died in music could go on and do what what he did with Foo Fighters. I, I the, it's it's unheard of in the music industry for someone to Absolutely. be a single part of a, a a monumental a monumental band whether you like yeah. it or not. They were monumental in, Oh in no, I'm I'm a fan of Nirvana and to, I think it's to go and do what he's done is unheard of. He's actually that and I I read this at one point. He's actually had to like twice as much success with Foo Fighters, and the band's been around twice as long already. Foo, Foo Fighters has been around twenty years already. Yeah, and and I'm not I'm not a huge Foo Fighters fan. I I, I could give or take them. It's not. Great I'm for not, me. but I am a wicked huge Dave Grohl fan. Yeah, yeah and and to uh, I'll go back to this like probably twenty times over the life of us doing this podcast. But him doing Little Nicky with CeeLo at one of the events where they, you know, yeah. Grammys or something was just insane. I mean, I'll, I'll, that's forever going to stick in my mind is one, a standout performance. Um, but I, I don't, I don't want to dwell on him too long. Right. I do want to take that and turn that some way. I want to talk about Andrew Wood from mother love bone. Yeah. So amazing talent left, left the scene way too soon. And, whether you like it or not, people say, you know, oh, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, you know, uh, Screaming Trees, all, all the big bands from that time, Nirvana, pushing that grunge sound. He started it. I don't care what anybody says. Mother Love Bone started that movement. But you take him away and you take the rest of the band and put, <laughs> put one of the most prolific uh, voices in music history in front of them. And you, you do kind of what Dave Grohl did, and you take off. I mean, Ahmet and who's the other guitar player? Jeff Ahmet and um, God, I can't think of the other guitar player's name now. Um, From Pearl Jam. Uh, anyway, God, I can't think of his name. Anyways, but you take two extremely amazing musicians, and you know, I think there was one. Uh, did the bass player come too? I think it was three out of the the Mother Love Bone that that you know spurred off and and um, Eddie Vedder started the band Pearl Jam basically, but right. to take this, some extremely amazing musicians and turn that into Pearl Jam, who is you know going to be nationally known forever as part of the main grunge scene leaders, it, you know it fits right into what you said about Dave Grohl or what I said about Dave Grohl. Well, I think, and that falls right into the talent level thing, too. Yeah. Because the band itself was talented, and then you add a talented singer, and then you've got a, an unbeatable combo, yeah. I think. Yeah. So then, so, but if ahead. Eddie Vedder would die, would that band be able to replace him then? You see what yeah, I mean? The, I think it's the, yeah. the level of talent almost dictates the level of uh, success after. Yeah, maybe that's where we settle on because you know, as as good a guitar player as as um, Brian May was with Queen, you know, with with yeah, him they've... leaving, basically, you know, they didn't. They've had a couple of people fill in. They had Paul Rogers, I think, fill in for a while, right? Yeah, from they, Bad Company. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it, it, they didn't really, you know. But they're they not not making the... new music though. They're just touring on their laurels or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. See, that's that's where it got kind of great for me too because. I, I'll use you know Stone Temple Pilots and Alice in Chains making new music with different singers that sound close. It's it's one of those things that I think it uh, I, all I could boil it down to was the talent level because right. yes I mean Paul Rogers sorry but Bad Company did some good things you know and uh, this Adam 
I can't think of his last name that, that's that's touring with Queen or whatever. Well, I, I think the guy from um, Muse is touring with him now, but um, but, but Adam Lambert again, was the one you were talking about. Lambert, yeah. When you um, when you just sprinkle people in to fill in, just I think that's where it. I'm sorry, that's where it pisses me off. If you're just no. trying to make a dime touring yep. on your laurels, if you're not advancing that, if you're not trying, and that's where I give Alice in Chains and or Stone Temple Pilots credit. If you're trying to find someone that sounds close to the sound that you that you're known for that you love that you're trying to and you and you try to make quality music after that new music i think that's valid a, a la acdc uh acdc exactly there's they had their core sound you know and they and albeit brian johnson is i think night and day from bon scott it's the same feel and the same talent level because mm -hmm. for Brian Johnson, for all his, I'm sorry, I, I I'm taking Bon Scott a hundred times out of a hundred, but for Brian Johnson, oh, yeah. his talent yeah. level matches Bon Scott's mm -hmm. yeah. as far as yeah. range. And, 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 and I'm sorry, but whether it's, you know, four packs of Marlboro Reds a day to get that sound, or if he gargles <laughs> razor blades, Probably. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever it is, th it, that, I mean, for, 30 years now has been ACDC sound whether we like it or not or whether we you know all long for the good old days Brian Johnson is ACDC yeah a and there's a generation and a half now that don't know Bon Scott you bon know Scott. the that how that happened but yeah they'll hear like TNT on the radio or you know something odd out there or even highway to hell every once in a while but right you know that's it that's kind of it for them but they're like oh who's this who is this guy why you know what is you know yeah yeah they they obviously replaced him because he sucked <laughs> no you know <laughs> right right but, whatever but, don't, don't you're going to make me angry so. no i know <laughs> but i mean that's but i mean that's the generation we're in now is yeah we're we're in a what have you done for me now lately mentality right. where like I said, you have to, and we'll see if it works out for some of these other bands, but a lot of the bands, you know, like the Beach Boys, Leonard Skinner, you know, they replaced their core members or singers or, and kept going. And, but how much new material did uh, Leonard Skinner do after he died? Right, right. I, I, I Actually, quite a bit, but. Uh, known stuff probably not too much i mean well, yeah it's it's all their stuff was done pretty much before he right you know, passed away so. exactly and that's like but, um go ahead go ahead no i'm i was just continuing with that they're that level of you know because they died young you know I think that I think when in the in their careers when they die i think i think matters too because you know, like for Van Zant to die, you know, and and versus like when Scott Weiland died, you're talking about you know early on in a career in your band's career versus you know, I mean, they had Stone Temple Pilots had basically broken up because of Weiland's addictions and everything else. I mean, they weren't even they weren't really a band they were but they weren't type of thing so right if he would have died in the mid 90s a la you know kurt cobain or you know right. shannon hoon or whatever when they were when those bands were huge i don't think it would i don't think it would have kept going i don't think those yeah. i don't think they were mentally or age wise mature enough to to do what they're doing now and I, I, again, I, I just kept coming back to the talent level. I think it's, yeah, it, it's, I, no, I agree with that. I, I didn't, hadn't really crossed my mind. It was more, I kept it more, a little simple, but I, I wish I would have really kind of thought that through before, before I did a little bit of the research. Cause I, I just kept it simple of, Hey, did I really want this band to go on or Hey, didn't I? But you're right. It, the thinking about the deepness of it, about how, you know, why those bands went on and actually was successful and why they didn't, you know, kind of, it's starting to, to come a lot more clear on that, but yeah. I, um, I'm going to switch gears real quick, kind of getting close to, to our, our, okay. how long we want to keep this, but 
I want to throw a couple odd ones at you that I found when I was I was out there. And um, uh, Phil Linnut, Link Linknot, Linknot, Linnut. Anyways, um, from Thin Lizzy. Yeah, I saw that one. And yeah, a big, big, big. Um, I I love their music. I, I heard uh, Boys Are Back in Town, and I went and kind of. The, the years ago, when I was a kid, I, I heard that song and went back and started listening to all their stuff. You know, obviously, I've heavily bass driven because he was the bass player and singer. But you know, you, that was a, that was a distinct sound. I mean, sure. it, when him going away really kind of made the band go away. I would have loved to have heard more stuff out of them. Uh, well, see, and that falls into the the southern rock category. And mm-hmm. although not being a huge fan, I still I I agree, and I would have. Even with um, Leonard Skinner, I, I mean, I agree with the the ability that, you know, his brother is obviously mm-hmm. not that bad. Just as good. Yeah. Right. So why didn't <laughs> yeah, they... Yeah, I saw them live with their brother. He was, why they didn't amazing, they continue so. making new music? Because was yeah. was was a, was he the, the better writer? Did, was he the only one that could pull it together? So, I mean, because you can be a talented singer and not be able to, you know, spell right. spell your name or you know write, carry a tune in a bucket so write music right not be able to write music yeah. right um another one you already mentioned was shannon hoon with blind melon uh that that band was uh, i really loved that band <laughs> it was amazing i really uh, loved that band but i think he was the only thing he again yeah. that falls in under my talent level thing so in excess um one of my favorite bands in the 90s very not genre fitting, like we talked about a couple episodes ago. Yeah, they, they, they were more were, pop. Yeah, they were rock. in that mix of pop and rock, right? Yeah. Kind of like a Faith No More feel uh, mix type stuff. And they actually, I mean, they had a game show. I say a game show. They actually had a, you know, like a talent search on TV. Right. You know, to, to be him. the next lead singer of NXS. To yeah. which... To which um, uh, the lead singer of Vintage Trouble actually was on that show. Which are you serious? I did not know that. Oh yeah. <clears throat> um, but as a side note, no, they and they. I don't think they ever found anything. And I, I don't. And they've never made any new music, have they? In excess, I don't, I don't think they have. Think so, because he died. Well, that was. What ninety seven? I was gonna say late ninety ninety eight ninety seven, yeah ninety seven ninety yeah, eight somewhere in there. And um, but I think but there again, uh, they were huge. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was that was a unfortunate one for him. He was top. I mean, they were they were the top of their and that their game and that, that point, falls so. that goes right back into my timing thing. Right in the peak of their because if he yeah. would have died now. Would they have, would they have, you know, and you know, I hate playing that. What if, you know, what could have happened? Yeah. <laughs> what could have, should have, would have, but would they have continued to make good music? Would they have tapered off? Would they have, you know, what could have happened versus what yeah. did happen? I mean, they were at the peak of their career and he killed himself. So well, hold that, hold that thought on, on what could have happened. My, my parting shot will be a nice, okay. I'll give you a few minutes on the parting shot on what could have happened. Last one I had on my list though, was, um, Sid Vicious from the Sex Pistols. I, I don't, you know, obviously punk was, was a, an outskirts genre, but still very liked by a lot of people. Oh, I love, I punk. still love that sound. I love, yeah, punk. I still love that sound. Early eighties um, punk. I mean, or even yeah. mid, even even late, even mid mid seventies late eighties or late seventies punk was just perfect right where it needed to be. Oh yeah, no, I mean but, it was underground. It was dirty. It's like something you scraped off the bottom of your shoe and yeah. got punched in the face by it, you know. And yeah, and Sid losing Sid Vicious was man, you know, where could that band have been had he stuck around? Because wow, I think that like, was. I, I mean, I this is a bold statement. I'm going to go out on a limb. I think that was more detrimental to the whole punk scene than yeah. just that band. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Certainly not. You know. Yeah. I I, I honestly believe the Sex Pistols were a, a a flagship for punk late '70s, early '80s, and then 
he died, it was like everybody like, nah, we just lost interest. Because there wasn't yeah. much behind I mean, Rotten, that that was that marketable uh, for to use a bad but John, term. And, no, and Johnny Rotten was this, the voice. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not, you know, the, 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 the singing part didn't go away. Well, but the heart of the band and some of the talent went away. Oh, so. no, that's, that's like Cliff Burton. I mean, you, you can't replicate that intensity. You can't replicate that. I mean, I, I honestly believe you cannot re- replicate that. That's again the talent level. I mean, right. you can. There's a lot of guys that can play guitar and punk. You know, play that, but it's you just. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. Um, yeah, it's and, and and some of their stuff was written before he got there, and some of the stuff you know that where they were coming up was before he got there. But yeah, I it's, it's, that's that was a big hit. So okay, so gonna do my parting shot we try and do this every time um <laughs> dime bag daryl you know it was literally yesterday was the anniversary of his death 13 years i i know I, I i i i i am i did not plan that no i know I did, when i talked to you about where this was going where our no we set this going, up weeks I did ago not plan that yeah <laughs> but but I, now to preface it, it for those who don't know he was Pantero had already been split. He was playing with Damage Plan. Yeah. But, but where, I mean, you get a lot of bands that come back together and do reunion tours or get back together and write music, kind of like Soundgarden we talked about yep. with uh, Cornell dying. But he was an integral part of metal oh. coming to light. At the same time, you know, kind of tail end of Metallica and Megadeth type stuff. But okay. Where could, where could we have been on with him still around? Okay, I I will preface this. Um, in early nineties, ninety one or ninety two. Um, ninety eight. The local, the Tampa local rock station played this love on the radio, and. It was one of the, I remember now I'm, I'm dating myself hugely here, but <laughs> when we first moved to Florida a year or so after we moved to Florida, I remember vividly being in an upstairs apartment in suitcase city in Tampa, having the window open in the fall and having the tape recorder on the windowsill waiting for Q105 to play. We built this city on rock and roll. Be- and because because they cut in the city by the bay, the city oh, that yes. rocks and never stops. Q one oh, they put their moniker in in the song. Yeah, and I, th- I remember. That. And I thought, and at that point, in my I was I don't know, eleven or twelve years old. I thought, oh my god, this band wrote a song about the city I live in, and I did because I didn't know I, you know I had no idea about editing. I had I had zero clue about it. But I thought it was the best thing ever. And I mean, I literally was one of those deals where I sat there with my fingers on the, you know, the play and record button waiting for it to start, hoping to catch it. Fast forward 10 years and not, not even 10 years, five, six, seven years. And I found myself with my fingers on play and record waiting for this love to come back on the radio. And I heard when I heard it, and uh, yes, I'm going off on a tangent because for those that don't know, Pan- no, Pantera fine. got me through a lot. Dude, that that's why that's why it's called the party it, shot. Sometimes it, it's it's good. Actually. It really Pantera was an epic band for me and still is. Like if I'm, I, I mean I don't know how to even if I'm pissed off or something, rather than punch walls, I listen to Pantera, and that. That gets you're probably not the that, that gets my aggression out through that's through the sounds like that guy knows how I'm feeling, you know. And but when I heard that song, I was like, What is that? And I went and and um immediately started looking for the album it was on, and it was Vulgar Display of Power. And just the the CD cover of that guy getting punched in the face. I'm like, I'm buying this. I don't, you know, I don't care what else is on it. I'm buying this. And 
Track one is Mouth for War. And the guitar work and the that whole band, that whole song is my t- is me as a teenager. And if you listen to the song, listen to the lyrics, listen to the the music, the aggression, that song is me at 15 years old. It, it truly was everything I embodied, everything I was thinking, everything I was, you know, the angst, the anger, the, you know, everything. And then I started listening, and then I listened to the rest of the album. And, you know, when it got to, you know, effing hostile, I... I completely changed my view of mu- of what music could be. Dimebag Daryl's guitar work, Daryl Lance Abbott's guitar work on that album changed what I thought it could be. Because I was listening to Anthrax and Exodus and, and things of that nature where they're, it's just, you know, dun, 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 driving guitar rhythms. And he was doing the rhythms and these ridiculous, like, harmonics with the and you know using the the tremolo bar and it's like what is this well and he had a distinct he had a distinct sound to his guitar yeah he he he, he didn't go the the normal route of metal or rock and with a, a, a traditional you know les paul through a marshall stack he didn't he didn't sure. do that he didn't he play jackson, jackson through uh, explorers uh, uh and... carving head yeah he, he didn't go through that 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 traditional sound on either side he almost created his own niche sound right in in music and you know where could pantera have been and had he not and you know, and like killed? and i see where you where you, what you're getting at about not wanting to go into the uh what could have been um right that was that was a blow to me because i because that one was unnecessary you know the guy got shot in the face on stage you know what i mean right and, right. and i yeah, I, well, they're all unnecessary. Hanging yourself, yeah. drug overdose, yeah. getting shot. I, I, they're all unnecessary. John Lennon. Yeah, I know. You know? Well, yeah. N- yeah. I, he was on my list, but I, I, it's, they, they had already Yeah, no, they were already long. Started their own solo long career. Long gone. Anyway, I mean, that was, so. that was in the 80s and the Beatles. Were, yeah, anyway. Yeah. But for your parting shot, I don't think that that is one, like, again... The talent level that was that's impossible to replace. Yeah, exactly. And if and he, again, I know he he'd say kind of separated from Pantera, but yes, obviously there was some implications that they were wanting to get back together at some point, anyway. So sure, and even now, I mean, they uh, Phil Phil yeah wouldn't. I mean, he want he wanted you know he just wants to get back, but um. Vinnie Paul, the drummer, you know Daryl's brother that played drums in right. the band. It, there's some I don't know you know I have no idea what happened you, you never know but that falls into the you know bands separating or losing members because of you know other reasons than death but I don't think it was if Pantera was still together and uh, Dime got killed I don't think it was I don't, I don't it, there would there would be there would that was Pantera. Yeah. Because, again, as a whole, the talent level between the drummer, guitar player, bass player, and singer, if you call it singing, um, I don't. I don't think that that could, that couldn't have went on. Because, whereas, you can replace like it's obviously like Guns N' Roses replaced you know an entire band. You can't replace. That's like saying, okay, well, we're still going to tour as you know. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, except we're going to have his brother do it, you know, because he sings and plays guitar for the fabulous Thunderbirds. No, right. you can't. <laughs> no, it's not the same. No. And, and I think that's, I think that's where we were getting to on this. And again, I, I hadn't really thought of the depth of, you know, what, what, what the catalyst for go on or not go on was, but you're right. Talent level seems to be the, what we come back to. And I just, I wanted to get your opinion on that. Cause that was what, the kind of the last one on my list and I left it as the parting shot. So yeah, that's still, that still bums me out. And I don't, I don't think there, there are, there are people that, that aren't replaceable. Right. Um, and I think the, it goes personal. I mean, like, like these podcasts in our opinion, it goes, it goes personal because, you know, 
I was devastated that, you know, early on in my listening career, like, wow, that guy, Bon Scott was really good. You know, I, I, I love that sound. And who is this guy? But, right. but 30 years later, it's like, you know, Brian Johnson's a good singer, but I, I remember the old guy and he was really good too, you know? And then, but like that, I mean, it's more, it's, I think it's how integral you, you are with the music or with that person, whether you feel they should have went on or not, or whether you feel they should go on or not, because I, I, I love the band Stone Temple Pilots. I said that, but I, and I'm really glad two years, literally two years and plus a couple of days later from their original lead singer dying or killing himself, however you want to look at it, I think the talent level of the band was good enough to carry on, much like Alice in Chains, much like uh, Leonard Skinner. I think those yeah. bands ha ha almost had a, a, a duty to carry on if it happened early in their career, if they lost an integral part, whether it's Cliff Burton or whether it's Ronnie Van Zant or whether it's Scott Weiland. I think those bands almost have a... Uh, not a duty, but almost out of respect for their fans yeah, um, to carry on. And, and there's a fine line between carry on touring as that band or making new music. Right. And I think that's where it yeah. becomes personal. If you think, man, I can't believe they replaced him and they're making new music. But if the music is great, do you fault them? Do you fault them for carrying on, or do you do like Queen and just carry on and and make you know not make any new music, but just try to replace that guy, just to try to make keep the money rolling in? And I'm not and I'm not and, saying that's why what or why Queen tours still, but yeah. I'm just saying that, that that it becomes personal. But but I think I think you're asking that question. Sure. And for for anybody listening. Send us an email. Absolutely. T tell us what you think. And we, we, I'll say this at the end of every podcast now. Music musing feedback at gmail.com. Send us an email. Tell us what you think. Absolutely. You know, I, I value your opinion, brother. You and I have been talking about this stuff for years, but I would love to hear what everybody else is thinking about it. Sure. You know, we post this on Facebook. We put, I post this on my, my personal blog, um, but it's, it's, it's open. It's not private. Um, so, you know, fill in, jump in, tell us what you think. Tell us, you know, give us ideas for the next couple of shows or something, but absolutely you know, go and to music, musing feedback at gmail.com. Right. And we post, like he said, we post this on Facebook or there. I'm mine's public. Uh, George Seibert, S Y B E R T Craig Seibert. Um, look us up, search us out, find out, you know, listen to the podcast, see what you think. Uh, and comment or send us a link or find us on messenger and and if you can't find us search us out by our last name because nobody else has it we're you know we're pretty much unique out there with it so yeah s y b e r t yeah. and look for us and and you'll and you'll find it if and if this triggers something you know by all means let us know because we're we're definitely down for different opinion and this is all opinion based and that's what the best part about music is um I might argue with you, but I'll never hate you for it. I mean, it'll exactly. It's all it's all good. I mean, I'll fight I'll fight to the death on some things, and some things I'm I'm willing. I'm I, but I've got an open mind. I know Craig does too. Yep. On a lot of the mu on a lot of the music uh, uh, opinions and stuff like that. So search us out, man. This that's what it's about. Is because I I want I I feed off this stuff. <laughs> exactly. But uh, well, thanks for hanging out, brother. Yep. I'll, uh, I'll we'll, we'll have another one in a couple weeks. Um, again, if you guys have some ideas on on shows, send them to us. But we've got quite a few backed up, and uh, we'll we'll talk again in a couple weeks. All right, I appreciate it, brother. Yep, see ya. See ya.